Once again, it's your good friend, Tramel Ray Isaac, Senior Art Director for Planet Side 2, and this is Inside the Player Studio. I am privileged to have my good friend, Mr. Tim Hylar from EverQuest 2. He's going to run over some uh, EverQuest 2 stuff, just in case you're interested in doing some EverQuest 2 stuff, which would be really, really cool, because... If you're waiting on me to put your stuff in, you can always hit Tim up. So, Tim, please introduce yourself. Give us a little rundown of who you are and what you do. So, my name is Tim Heidelar. I'm the art director on EverQuest 2. One of two people who approves, converts all the Player Studio stuff you guys are submitting. Um, also responsible for day-to-day -day art direction on the team. Sweet. So, I think you got some stuff for us today. Yes, you I want do. to go over like the do's and don'ts and how's and twos? We'll start with just kind of our general guidelines because we get asked this question a lot in the forums. Um, this is up on the website. You guys can kind of see what it is uh, that we want you guys to do, uh, some of the do's, some of the don'ts, and I'll explain a couple of them. And then the categories we're currently accepting. Once in a while we'll add a new category, but we have to make sure that it's something that fits in the game and is easy for us to convert. So what are the first things we stress? Go to the forums, post your work, get peer feedback. We cannot handle all the feedback uh, you guys will probably want, and your peers are a great place, particularly now since we've been uh, running the program on EverQuest 2 for well over a year. You're going to get some good feedback from some of the established creators there. Um, Sweet. So any of those Planet Side 2 guys out there, if you want to get down with the EverQuest 2 train, it's good stuff. Come on over. You actually get to create your own textures there, right? Yes. That See? Is, there you go. Yes, we See, provide. We don't, we don't allow that. We, yeah. we we cut that stuff out, man. You are not creating new stuff for us. But EverQuest 2 will allow you to make your own textures. You can be very, very creative. Almost anything you want. Sweet. As long as it fits in the game, right? As long as it fits. Well, I'll, I brought an example of... I'll explain. It's uh, okay. We've kind of opened it up a bit over time since, particularly uh, house items, they tend to exist in a in a zone that only you and your friends can access, so it doesn't kind of filter out to the world. So we've tried a couple things, and you'll see that maybe we wouldn't create and put in the game in any of the worlds we're creating, but might be fine for house because players, when they're creating their house, they're creating anything they want out of pieces anyway. So we're why kind of fight what players are really, really trying to create anyway. Okay, so what type of stuff do you accept? Uh, so we accept cloaks. You can see, probably a not too big example there. Um, this fits on the back. We provide a mesh, but basically a cloak is just a, a two panels on one texture. There's a front and a back, and you paint an awesome design on it, and it goes through. Um, and you need to make a normal map and a spec? Normal and spec, yep. Oh, man. Hold up, so... so they didn't restrict my player studio involvement just to Planet Side 2, did they? I don't think so. So I could submit some <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, seeing some of the checks that have been cut, I think we're all asking, you know, make some helms for Planet Side. Yeah, no, I just wanted, you wanted to know, clear that up real quick. I don't think I can submit stuff. Oh, so. All of a sudden, our wives are creating items. Like yeah, that, so. I got a cousin that's really good yep. at art. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And what else? House items? That yes. can be anything, right? This can be anything. Uh, it's a pretty broad term, and we get an insane amount of submissions in this category, and the creators have really kind of started to step it up and think outside the box. You know, in the beginning, you know, there were some, some of the simpler items you'd expect, but now it's gone to more complex items, and we notice that a lot of players are taking requests. You know, the forums will get together, or Facebook, or other avenues, and they'll request something that they really, really need, and some of our best sellers have come from those requests. Sweet. Yeah, and then there's just some general guidelines here, you know, 2000 try limit, uh, same texture setup, color, normal spec. And weapons and shields, it's a pretty good solid category. We can always use more, particularly in this category. Um, if there's a weapon style we haven't created, create it. You know, we opened it up recently to bows, though it's not listed here, so if you wanted to create a bow, that's now an option. And shields. And there's a great opportunity here, too. Some funky designs have come in here. Some ones themed around Brew Day have come through uh, the program. But, yeah, in a nutshell. So when you when you're talking about shields, I noticed that all of these are fully unwrapped. Do you support, like, mirroring and uh, all this stuff? Absolutely, yes, and we encourage it. Okay. Um, depending on how you're going to lay out your texture, you may or may not need to do it. But you'll see in some of the examples uh, that we highly encourage, and a lot of our posts on the forums are about mirroring to maximize your textile density because some of the things players want to create just won't hold up with a 512 which is the texture size you're locked at mm -hmm. so yeah we'll go from uh, 
uh, these and I'll actually show a couple examples. So just to kind of show you guys what's possible with just a single 512, one of our creators made this, um, what's, how do you zoom in here? Should be at the bottom right there. Yep. There you go. Let's see if I can get this larger. Oh. Come on. Uh, you, you, you're stuck on the wide screen gotcha. because of the Cintiq. So on here, this was a, a pub set that one of our creators had made. And at the bottom, you can see that there are three 512s. But this 512 was actually used on all three pieces uh, through mirroring and just using polys to cut up the geometry so that he could maximize the uh, amount of uh, texture uses. So like the stool top would be that small section right there and all the gold trim from there. The big panels you see here are from the panels inset here, which also are the panels here, 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 and we added some mirror in the back, which you can't see the shader. And then even the lion's head, which is mirrored, you can see it easier in the normal, is split down up here. And uh, from this, he got all three pieces with one texture, which is great. Um, he makes a note in his submission that he also used the same texture in all three, which saves us time, which actually means we'll convert it faster. The quality's there, looks good, turned out to be a really popular set because players would try and build something like this with a multitude of pieces. But if creators kind of create something that allows players to use fewer items, it'll generally tell, uh, turn, tend to sell much, much better. Very yeah. nice. What else do you have for us? And just to show you uh, on the same topic of sets, so this was an early set that was uh, created sometime last year, and we held on to it for a bit, and the creator kept adding more and more pieces to it. You know, every couple of weeks there'd be another uh, food item in is the set. Is that a steak? It is a steak. <laughs> it, is a, it is a steak with a potato on the side. It actually looks pretty delicious. Yeah. And um, by the time Thanksgiving came around, all the pieces have been submitted, and I believe we released it around that, that time. We kind of hold on to some things we think uh, might go well with events, and it tends to kind of help sales. You know, we, we want you guys to make money. And so all these pieces out there, which were sold as a bundle and individually, ended up doing really well. Um, and the, the texture sizes were smaller. We accept 512s and smaller. And since the size of these items are tabletop, they're about 256, maybe 256, 128. And at that point, it was just a matter of uh, some feedback loops and clean up some geometry. And these went in. And they proved to be quite popular. Very nice. And let's see, one of the things we talk about in here is create items in the colors you like best. Please submit only one item. Don't submit multiple color variations. I want to focus on the word variations because when this, this is not what we consider a variation. This is what we consider a different texture paint. The pattern is completely unique on all three. And when I got this item, I wasn't too sure about it. I was trying to think of how a player might use it, but it could be ornamentation. Our players love to create fish tanks. And the quality was good. It was really, really nice. And you shared the same normal across all three, which again saves us time, saves texture space. So they went in pretty quick, and we added a little glow and some emissive and a little little particle halo just because he requested it. You know, we'll, we'll try and get some other things in there for you guys. And uh, again, it turned out really well. But we wouldn't want to see like this red one in yellow and blue with the same pattern. It, mm -hmm. it would, needs to be unique. And so this went right through. And Let's see. So here's what I call some odds and ends. Some of these are funny. Some of these... Uh, is, uh, that, is that a rocking dog? <laughs> <laughs> it's a rocking horse that we released around Christmas time. I think we actually got oh, two of them man. in. And uh, this was the better of the two. And uh, again, this came from feedback from players. They wanted kind of toy items, um, uh, things like that. And this did really well. I, w I had reservations, but... You know, sometimes you got to try something, see if it's going to fail. We put it in. It did really well. Players loved it. And I expect uh, to see more in this kind of style. Very and nice. And this so, item. So, I mean, if you, uh, you, any of you Plant Side 2 guys interested in being really, really creative, Plant Side 2 is not the place for you. <laughs> no. Well, you can put a rocking horse on yeah, the. Yeah, you can't really do that type of stuff. No, like, on the front. But for EverQuest 2, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can, like, you know, look at that little stork. No, no look at the little toilet. Flamingo, pink the flamingos. The toilet. Is that a toilet? That I is thought a it was toilet. a fireplace. And it is thematically appropriate. So this one, uh, I'm sure the, the creator's watching. I sat on sat on this. Great. I sat on this for a long time. <laughs> I wasn't sure about it. You know, aside from some quality, I just wasn't sure if it fit. But It's a toilet. You got to have one. And that was the thing, going and looking is. on our forums, seeing what people make in their houses. Everyone made a toilet. So, there you go. Done, all right, we'll deal. try it, even with its you know, toilet paper rack right there. Oh, some, some papers. dude, I thought that was like a newspaper <laughs> stand. 
<laughs> well, that's what they're using to wipe, right? Uh, well, how come it's not like? Uh, I guess that's after, that's before you wipe. Thematically correct. Yeah, there yeah. it is. Done deal. You don't want to look in the pot. It, uh, first, yeah. first revision. Yeah, it, you it had, had like something in the pot. Some leftovers in it there. It did. Oh, nice. Had the last meal. <laughs> you, had, you took them out. <laughs> I had. To. Come I, on, no, no, you no, can't. No, no, leave. No. You can't take. Someone's that out. gonna get offended at that. Oh my god, <laughs> he bought it for himself, so you you can't you can't you know knock somebody for buying hey. toilet with Dookie in it. <laughs> <laughs> it was lumpy and everything. Perfect. That's awesome. Um, and then, you know, just a couple more items like Gnomish Chest, uh, some static uh, birds. If we had the time, we'd love to animate it. But this is the kind of stuff that players really like. It fills a need. It fills a gap. That's the most important thing I like to stress is we don't make it. You guys make it. All right. And, uh, and just in terms of creativity, this piece back here, it doesn't look like too much. But players used it for everything you can imagine. Built cages, aviaries, fences, it was headboards, just decoration. Yeah, it looks like a headboard. I would yeah. thought it was a headboard. And it get, yeah, it gets used a lot of different ways. Sweet. All right, there it is. EverQuest two taking submissions, and or did you go through all the categories? What categories? Through all the categories. But all let them? me give them one more shot. All right, go get through all the there. categories real quick. Here's kind of a, a spread of everything. You All can right. see that's the diversity. Of got stuff fish, got, got a got gingerbread fish, house. A toy train, which did really, really well. Really? Uh, yeah, this was uh, this is actually our first release right here. This is a heroic salesman's crate. Uh, things like this bridge, we don't offer bridges. Make a bridge, players buy it, because now in their houses they have a little bridge. They don't have to use a bunch of pieces for uh, Sets, again, this is one of the first sets in our, from our last... Uh, Sink tub in a bucket. Yeah, from Soy Live. This player started off, the first iteration was not that great, came back and actually hit it out of the park, and it's done really well. Nice. Um, and then we run contests periodically, so there's a Dark Elf Organ, uh, which did really good, and a door. Honestly, I didn't want to release doors. I was like, we don't need to release doors. This door's done really well because we don't have doors that fit the size and the shape that they needed. So There you, you know, go. Leave it to the players. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Really cool stuff. All right there, Mr. Heidlar. Uh, appreciate it. Absolutely. I wish you had a Twitter handle so people could follow you, but he's he's a little yeah, old school. I'm slow. He don't believe in Twitter. He thinks it's the devil. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate yeah. you coming out. Come and, and contribute, everyone. Exactly. Please uh, do some stuff while you're waiting on me because I'm slow. All right. That's the way it is. Thanks All for right. having me. See you guys. Thank you. All right. Let me get Mr. Heidlar out of here. Bam. Get that and move this on over. Look at that. Bam. All right. Let me get the chair out of there. All right, folks. All right. Take it easy, sir. All right, so we got our good friend Josh Sams, a.k.a. a fable automaton. I said that wrong. I know I did. And he is going to correct me here on this video. Welcome, my friends. I am Tramel Isaac, and I am here with my good friend, player studio creator, Josh Sams. How's it going, Mr. Sams? Going pretty good, man. Can't complain. Good, Friday good, here. good. All right, sweet. Let's get into it. So tell us a little bit about yourself, sir. Uh, my name is Josh Sams. Uh, I'm a 32-year-old multimedia specialist from Newport News, Virginia. Uh, I work full-time inside the aerospace industry doing uh, conceptual design. Um, I've, I've been doing it for about 14 years. So, you know, primarily a Maya user back in the day, but kind of expanded a little bit more past that. Uh, had to be a jack of all trades back in the day, so, you know, it, it's interesting when I see a lot of stuff come up on the forums because it's just like, I'm not using Maya right now, but, you know, a lot of the Maya problems are like so familiar. But anyway, I'm getting off track here. Yeah, um, yeah, stay on track here, stay on track. All right, so, how long have you been playing Plan Side 2? Uh, since about last summer, my nephew uh, kind of, he was down visiting his mother in Louisiana, and I was here in Virginia, and uh, they had a nice computer down there, and he was like, hey, you know, let's let's find a game we can play, and it ended up being Planetside because the free-to-play uh, platform kind of style that you guys got going on um, sucked me in, man. I, I love it. Like, I'm a big Halo fan. been playing that for years. I uh, love sci-fi. You know, I'm, I'm your typical nerd. Um, but I uh, started playing it. You know, spent a bunch of time on Esmer, driving around pointlessly in the middle of the night. Nice. Getting lost in the harasser. So That's what that's happens, man. That's what happens when you don't have a map. So, yeah, uh, what made you decide to start uh, making stuff for Player Studio? Uh, then, once again, the nephew, he talked me into it. He uh, 
we saw when you guys, I think it was like an ad or something, or you saw some somewhere in an advertising player studio, and, you know, he saw it, and then he was like, hey, Uncle Josh, you know, I know you already kind of do this stuff, so, you know, why, why don't you make us a helmet? Why don't you make us some, some gear that we could wear? And originally, you know, I was thinking, oh, that'd be cool, you know, it'd be nice to be able to make a helmet, some armor, and just, just some, stuff, some stuff to con- uh, customize our characters with, and kind of went from there, man, made that Cyclopean helmet. Um, it's one of those ones where it's kind of like, I wanted to make something that I, I want to wear. Uh-huh. I didn't really make it for everybody else, and that's what I came up with. And Sweet. That's a pretty nice helmet. I actually like that one. It's pretty cool. I appreciate that, man. Uh, so, how many items have you made so far? Uh, well, there was the Cyclopean, and then two other ones that I didn't concept out well enough, I guess, and kind of flopped on me. But uh, the two the cy- two Cyclopeans, or I'm sorry, the Cyclopean, and then, jeez, man, I made a bunch of harasser parts just recently. I want to say it's like seven or eight. Mm-hmm. And I think... I think quite a few of them are on completed status now. Um, hopefully, we'll get to see them in the game before too long. I'm not sure how you guys are going to roll them out, but all right. So, what what made you kind of gravitate toward the harasser attachments more so than the helmets or any of the other uh, offerings on Player Studio? Well, initially, uh, the, a lot of the stuff I do for for work uh, tends to be a lot of hard surface modeling, you know, mechanical stuff. Um, I, I draw, I'm, I'm a traditional artist, but over the years, you know, of doing a lot of this, you know, machinery and mechanisms, I haven't really had a chance to, like, kind of flush out uh, more of the concepting type stuff, like, you know, the ZBrush and all that. So hard surface modeling comes natural to me. And, uh, you know, with the vehicles, it just, it kind of loans itself to that. And, you know, I, I, I actually kind of enjoy low poly modeling. I don't know if, there's, there's probably other people in the world who like low poly modeling, but... I don't know, but uh, I started making the harasser parts mainly because uh, initially uh, my love of running people over, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, Sweet, so you made a couple of grill guards and some bumpers and stuff like that? Yeah, well, the, that one I was calling the toe cutter, you know, it's kind of tongue-in-cheek, you know, Mad Max mm-hmm. reference. But, um, you know, I was like, yeah, what, what do I need for the harasser? Well, let's think. I need something to run somebody over with. And then, and then later on, I was like, "Well, I need something to help me uh, not get lost." That's where I came up with the autopilot. I was mm-hmm. like, "Oh, get me to my destination. That'd be nice." Very nice. But, uh, so, how uh, how much time do you actually spend uh, working on player studio stuff? Oh, geez, uh, it's hard to say. Um, I spend my spare time, <laughs> what little there is. I mean, I got a wife and two kids, and I work full time. So, and you got a dog too. I saw that earlier. Yeah, yeah the dog around. too. But, uh, you know, you know how it is, man. It's like get home in the afternoon, do the wife and kids thing, and then take what little spare time I have left and dump it into Player Studio. I'll probably get about, I don't know, sometimes a couple of hours a night, maybe three or four hours a night, four or five times a week if I'm lucky. Sometimes I hit up all weekend if that's what I'm doing. But uh, <laughs> you guys are cutting into my sleep. Hey, man, I'm, you I'm know. I'm chronically sleep deprived. You're on your way. So, uh You've just gotten into Player Studio. Like a couple of your things have just gotten in. So uh, obviously your first check was fairly modest, I might it say. Was, it was better than nothing, man. I mean, I exactly. can't complain. It paid for one of my software upgrades. There um, you go. So free money. Yeah. It's always good. Are so, you guys familiar with Moto? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm a big Moto proponent, man. I started using it a couple of years ago, and you know, due to the price point and some of the features it's got built in. Mm-hmm can't beat it they just went to 801 gotta love it man it's a nice tool very nice tool we we know them uh intimately so um so for your next uh group of things what do you plan on what do you have on on tap for what's coming next from josh sams well you know i'm not too sure man i'm just kind of playing it playing it as it comes along you know uh normally i one of the things i really like to like is specifically with the harasser so I kind of like to look at what you guys got and kind of say, okay, you know, I don't want to reinvent this. I don't want to make something completely different or, you know, I, I want it to look like it's supposed to go in the game. So I'll look at the shapes and I'll look at, you know, kind of the body lines and everything. And I'll say, okay, how can I change this, but still make it look stock? And, you know, that's kind of where I've ended up with a lot of stuff. Um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of stumped on the harasser a little bit right now. 
Um, I was, I'm hoping that at some point in the future, you guys might actually let us put some stuff back in that rumble seat area. Mm -hmm. I think there's, there's a lot of potential back there. Um, you know, even if it's just like simple stuff, just like maybe kind of keeping it, keeping it tight to like those bars kind of on the back and sides. I mean, I know that, you know, you can, you, you can, if you incorporate it into the, the windshield. So if you want to take the windshield and expand it out to the back, but not actually cover up the actual rumble seat itself so that people yeah. don't clip into it, then you can yeah. probably work on that. So, Yeah, I gotcha. Sweet. So if you have any advice for anybody out there looking to get into Player Studio, what would it be? Uh, Got to find the software that you want to learn and start pounding at it every day. Got to gotta do your homework, get into some tutorials, dig up YouTube, learn box modeling, learn subdivisional service modeling, uh, do some concepts, some good old fashioned pencil sketches. Um, really just dig into it. You know, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but one of the things I really like about Player Studio, specifically like, you know, my experience with the forums and stuff is I get the impression that there's a lot of young, young guys and kids trying to get in th uh, through this. And I don't know how it was for you guys, but when I got into 3D, there wasn't, I didn't have opportunities like Player Studio. It was like, you know, you knew somebody, and if you were lucky, you know, you could build a portfolio and then try to, you know, try to get a position or a job, or you go to school for it for X amount of time and then build a, a portfolio and then try to get into it. But this is, I mean, this is a huge opportunity for any anybody to just build a couple of solid pieces, put it in their portfolio, and hopefully launch a career. I mean, like Art Torn, that guy blows me away. Yeah, he's very, very talented. And he's only been doing this for like six, seven months, so. Yeah, I mean, know, that, I thought that crazy. was insane. Especially considering, too, he was like, what, a, 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 a computer engineering or? Yeah, I don't know. It was like cooking or, was, I don't know, home yeah. like, He's doing, I don't know, interior decorating. Uh, something crazy. Like, that has nothing to do with art. Exactly. How, how did you get yeah. into that? But anyway, yeah. he's talented. He needs to stick with it. All he's right. Got a future. All right. Anything in closing you'd like to leave the people with? Uh, Use your textures. You want to plug any of your work that's coming up? Anybody you want to get anybody to buy certain things? Which ones are you are you looking forward to? Um, I love them all, man. It's kind of sad too because I've done I've done like several windshields and it's like I'm, I'm probably gonna end up competing against myself in a way. But most likely, most yeah. likely. But if all the money's coming to you, there's no competition. There it is. <laughs> done uh, deal. All right, folks. That was it. This is Mr. Josh Sams. I appreciate it. Thanks. Keep making more stuff for Player Studio, and I am out. Hey, that was Mr. Josh Sams. Thank you for the interview. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining me. All right, so I'm going to just hop right into this. You know, give you guys a little bit of something. So let me go ahead and move this on over. So on the forums, our good friend, Mr. Stubborn, was doing some uh, helmet action for the NC. So there's a couple things I don't particularly like about this one that need to be changed in order for it to actually go through. So let me go ahead and change it. Let me get this out of here. Let me go ahead and do this. Get my red marker. Everybody loves the red marker. So... All right, let me get let me get up in here. Still up in the yeah, yeah, a little red marker there. How you like that? How you like that red marker? All right, so I don't like that one. That one's got to go. Um, I think this one's you know pretty good. It's got some issues though, like this piece. Not really NC. It's just too smooth. And it's surrounded by a bunch of facets, so it looks a little out of place. So I would go ahead and clean this up and just continue that on through, you know. Make that, you know, continue that on out. Just don't, uh, you know, don't mind that sloppy line work there. You know, continue that on through so that this actually matches the same kind of faceted look as the stuff on the side. Uh, and then, of course, you got, like, some really Play-Doh-y-like stuff over here. Like this stuff right here. 
like you see how this just kind of like I'm assuming is made out of I don't know rubber or something you know it's not really the NC style you want you probably want to bring this down here and then make a strap or something and then put you know a, a buckle or some kind of you know fastener on it and then you know of course keep that right up against the head you know make it look like it's tight you know and then separate that a little bit I like this part I like the fact that you got this kind of inset let it clean this up clean it up make that nice and square or whatever and probably even uh, do something like this kind of bring it bring it down a little bit you know give it a nice little grimace you know make it nice and mean whatever that is you know give it something a little bit of character in there I like the way you got this in here but I would definitely work this in just a little bit better do something with this stuff in here so it looks more like you know like it's part of uh, the mask itself you know I think I think I see this a lot I see this a lot where people just kinda like take a bunch of shapes and then just kinda shove them together and say oh it's a helmet doesn't really work that way those those things need to integrate in a way that's that looks like it's you know manufactured or built the way that it's supposed to be built so just kind of shoving shapes on top of each other is not really going to work um i'm not really sure what that is i'm assuming it's a camera it could be a camera it could be a light i don't know uh and the fact that i don't know what it is is troubling to me so make it obvious so when when people are looking for your helmet they can say oh the nc helmet with the thing on top what kind of thing is it? Is is the, the NC helmet with the light on top? With the one, with the camera? Is it a rocket launcher? Is it a Nerf launcher? I don't know, but it needs to be obvious to me and the consumer. Uh, and I would probably, you know, throw like maybe some kind of cloth back here or something. You know, some kind of leather sleeve that goes in there, so it doesn't look like he's just got a bunch of metal sitting on his his dome. You know, some kind of padding or something that kind of you know, protects that from the rest of the helmet. But, I mean, it's a good start. I mean, I don't, like I said, this one is just uh, off base. I don't particularly like that one. But I think this one's got, this one's got a lot of potential if you uh, do a couple things to it. So there you go, Mr. Stubborn. There is my little draw over for you. And, uh, let's see. Again, for those who don't know, or didn't know or didn't join us last week I have an Imgur uh, page that I've just kind of amassed a bunch of different references around the globe uh, that I think would be useful to your efforts to making uh, anything that's sci-fi so a um, bunch of really cool stuff in there so take a look at that there it is my Imgur should I just you know take that and Type that into the thing there. Can everybody see that? You know, get that. Bam. Copy and paste that, folks, and put that in there, and then you guys can, you know, see what's on my mind when I actually, you know, when we make stuff internally. These are the types of things that I draw from. Um, so there you go. A little bit of inspiration for those who are wanting to create some sci-fi stuff. So um, let's get into some of the stuff that I've seen submitted thus far. I'm going to start off with uh, some harasser attachments that uh, were submitted. So, uh, I believe, I don't know who did these. Let me go ahead and get the submission form and find out. So, I'll give the person proper their proper dues. Uh, let's see. Which one is that one? That one's harasser spikes. Where's I think that one's it. Where's it? No, that's not the road ripper. It's not that one. Let me see. I don't know. I don't know who made these. But anyway, let's go over them. 
All right. Uh, these look these look pretty decent. I don't. I don't see nothing wrong with these. These are good. I would reduce the stuff on the inside though, just so you can save some polygons. Always save polygons when you can. No, come on, man. Every week it's the same thing. All right. Um, I don't know if it's a conversion from whatever file you're using to OBJ, but after it's all said and done, brother. It's got to be welded. You got to weld that stuff together. Um, anyway, I would just delete that anyway because it's on the inside of the wheel and it's just wasting polygons. You can spin those somewhere else, maybe somewhere on the outside. Get a nice little lip right there if you wanted to. Uh, or you could spin them kind of welding those verts because you're actually costing us verts when you don't weld them. So if they're not welded, then those verts actually count against us. So... Weld all your stuff before you send it in. Um, like I said, I don't know if it's a conversion issue from whatever file you're using to OBJ, but um, when it's all said and done, make sure you get open up your OBJ and double check it so that you don't have situations like that. All right. Uh, on this one, I think he's using the tire texture in the middle. Hmm. I'm not sure how I, how I feel about that one, cause it's not it's, it's like really big. It's you know scaled up really big. I would go ahead and I'll probably tighten that up, tighten this up a little bit, just a little bit. All right, moving on to the next group of harasser tires. We go ahead and delete those. Done with those. Uh, these guys spikes. So you notice it's got like some blue stuff on it. That is what we call Empire color. It's purple. Actually, it's blue on this screen because I guess this one hasn't been calibrated. Nicely done. Um, so the purple is the Empire color, and the Empire color is now controlled by RGB value, no longer part of the texture. So, um, And, of course, that is something that you guys do not see. You can't see where the Empire tint is. I will show you what that looks like. Let's see, we've got Empire Tent Mask. Right here, this is Alpha. Empire Tent Mask. Bam. Let's look at that. Okay. Well, obviously, you can't really tell what's going on there, but just assume for one second that you know that. All of this is the harasser buggy texture, and these are the parts that are tinted so that you can have color. So white means primary, and black is secondary. Everything that's gray has no empire color at all. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, and I have a great, some great news for you guys. Uh, let me go ahead and go full screen because this is major, major, major stuff. All right, so. Uh, you know, I, in a lot of these streams, we kind of explain, we go through a lot of stuff and kind of explain it. Hey, you can't really see this. You can't really see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those days are over. I was, I was bore witness to a new tool that we have for you guys that will allow you to see everything we see. It is awesome. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, your days of waiting to see exactly what we do are almost over. I'm going to probably guess within the next month or so, Mr. Chris, Chris Lang, our resident uh, coder, who has been working diligently on trying to get us a solution for the players like yourselves, has come up with the most brilliant tool ever. It is a viewer that actually uses uh, our rendering uh, pipeline and our shaders. So now you guys get to do everything. I'm so happy. Happy days. Gone are the days of me cleaning up your crap. You guys will get to do it for me.
So you get to do detail normals, you get to do empire tint, you get to do second channel UVs, you get to export it. Like all of this stuff is now in your hands. So people who complain about me choosing the wrong texture or somebody on my team choosing the wrong part of the texture or changing stuff. So on you now, brothers, sisters, it's on you. You guys are going to be doing all this stuff from start to finish and checking waiting. So there you go. It's up to you. It's going to cut the time from us getting that to putting it on the marketplace in half. I don't I don't know how much it's going to cut, but it's going to reduce some time on our side. That's for sure. Um, but the, the great thing is that you guys get to see everything and that's courtesy of Mr. Chris Lang. I'm going to try to have him on the show when the tool is ready and then he can actually run through it and, uh, show you what you will be receiving. Um, if we've been testing it internally, you know, running it through the paces, it's going to be very basic. It's going to give you exactly what you need at this point. And then we're going to be you know, ramping it up, giving you some more and more features as time goes on. But it will be glorious. Trust me. All right, back to this. So I've got this thing here. And I think he's done a really good job. I like the design. Anybody wants to see that on um on the buggy. Bam. pretty cool I like that it's pretty nice uh don't mind the yellow part in there that's just just a artifact of the Empire tent uh but yeah I like the design I like the way it fits in there I would say if yeah I would say kind of clean this up tighten this up if you can because it's got a little fuzzy it's getting a little fuzzy yeah right in there it's kind of blurry it's kind of chunky might want to tighten that up. Maybe even just kind of like map just these two squares to something. Then you could get a nice tight um, pattern in there. Try that. Give that a shot. Um, but other than that, yeah. And then, you know, try to remove some of these polys that you don't really need. And you know, if you want these sticking out the back, maybe you can just kind of reduce some of these in the back. You know just for saving sake and then maybe you can spend some more up front all right uh on to the next one on to the next one this one's pretty cool i like this one let me go ahead and zero that one out this one is fairly basic and i would actually spruce it up a smidge because you got a lot of like kind of just broad flat colors let's take a look at the UVs, shall we? I'm going to guess that. Oh, look at this. It's got a lot of stuff just kind of jammed up in the thing, which is fine. It's fine. It's all good. It's all good. Let's find out what he's got up in here. So, yeah, he's got a bunch of stuff kind of just piled up over there and some stuff here. And nothing else. Does he have anything else? No, he's got one right here. One down here for the little yellow things. I would take some of these uh, areas that are bigger swatches and try to avoid like complete blackness like this. You know, try to avoid that at all costs. If you're gonna use some kind of black like that, make sure it's um, it's got some kind of tooth to it. And it does have a detail normal on it though. Um, and some of these, make these areas broader. You want to get like some kind of modeled texture to that so it doesn't look just like a flat gray. So I would pick a gray that's got like some kind of, you know, variation in it, you know, some some kind of, you know, different paint type in it and just kind of map that around. But, you know, as far as like tire spikes go, pretty good idea. I like it. I like it. All right. So. Next up, I believe that's me. Let's see when I got this thing in here. Oh yeah, let me do this one real quick. Nope, don't save. All right, you guys, any questions? Uh, just go ahead and throw those in the chat, and I will answer them as I go 
round. All right, so here is uh, TR Alpha, and it is apparently a gas mask. And I like this, and I like the way it, where it came from. You know, I saw the original, and uh, I like the way it started because it started pretty pretty bad. And I like the way it, you know, actually transformed over time, which is awesome because it, it came out pretty good. Um, one thing that I would like to know is why do you want to kill me? Why do you want me to have a heart attack, sir? Come on. Come on, man. All right, who did this one? Alpha. Okay. That one was done by Akechi, Akechi, Akei, Akechi, Akachi, Akachi. That sounds about right. Is it Akachi? Okay. All right, Akachi. Got to weld those verts, baby. Got to weld those verts. That's what you got to do, babe. That's what you got to do. All right. Uh, Yeah, besides that, this is a good... It's a good start. I like this. It's got some detail normal actually in there. Start off. This gets a little muddy. Like your your verts. I mean your your geo gets a little wacky in here. I'm not really sure why though. It looks like you're trying to weld this stuff together. Which I mean obviously is not welded, but looks like you're trying to build this into the mask. It's not necessary. You don't actually have to do that. You don't have to do that. Just lay that right on top and then clean all of this stuff up. This is bad mojo in there. So clean this up. This should just be like straight through just like that and then straight on down right through there. No need for all this bull jive in there. So clean that up. Um, I would say make sure that this is round. It looks a little oval. It's a little oval. I don't know if you meant to make it oval, but uh, if that's the case, make it oval and then make the surrounding pieces oval too because this kind of dips and, you know, kind of bends and does some weird stuff. So I don't know what's going on here because it actually doesn't go all the way around properly. So clean that up because you got this here that's nice and straight, goes all the way around, and then it gets kind of wacky back here. So I would say clean this up right there, make sure that that's all rounded stuff like that pretty cool um, when you've got like straps and stuff it's good to make sure that you have like some kind of tightness to it so it doesn't look like it's just laid on the guy's head so when you put the head in there you're gonna have straps that that oh go over the top of other straps you make sure that you actually mind the fact that there's a strap underneath this in your geo so this will kind of like bow out a little bit and then come back in when it gets past the strap. And it looks like you've got, let's see how many tries on this joint. Oh, you got a little bit of wiggle room. You got some room to add some more stuff. So, uh, yeah, you got some room to, to add some more stuff. I like the fact that you, you, you added these straps and they go through here and actually you thought it through. You know, the original didn't really have uh, all this kind of detail in it, which is great. Awesome. I like that. Keep your thicknesses proper, though. Make sure you don't get wobbly in there. It's getting a little wobbly. And uh, stuff like this, when you're doing... Um, when you're doing those goggles and stuff, make sure you have all of those completely unwrapped so that you don't get, you know, this kind of craziness going on in the eyeball but yeah it's good I would in these little filter event thing holes I just go ahead and take that and make that all black keep it real simple keep it real simple and you already got like the detail normal in there yeah choose that black go all the way over the top of that you can probably even keep the holes but just make this all black and rubbery and I think that would set it off so, that one's pretty cool. I like that. And we've got this one, which is, uh, 
No, I think this one's the alpha one. Which one was the other one? Oh, that was the Hell's Hell's Helmet. And that wasn't by Akachi. Hell's Helmet was by who is this? Let me see his submission. Um uh Binary Coder. That was Binary Coder that I was talking to. So Binary, if you're out there, that was your helmet. Sorry, I you know, kinda mixed them up. But binary, hit those. Or just watch the replay. I'll I'll put a note in the form so you'll know. All right, so this one came out pretty good. I like this one. Nice geo. Geo's nice and clean. Let's check for faces. Oh, look at that. One solid piece. Imagine that. I love you already. You're my bestest friend. You know, one solid piece. Nicely done, sir. Good job. So I like the shapes in this one. Very well done. Using these bevels accordingly, properly. Like the shapes. Really, really nice. You don't have to do much on this at all. I don't think we're going to have to touch this one. This one's going to go through nicely. Thank you. Thank you, Akashi. That was pretty nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Anybody got any questions? I think that was my last one. I got 15 minutes. Want me to head on to the forums, folks? Head to the forums where all things come true. I was saying earlier that uh, a lot of people don't know this, but one third of our Player Studio creators make over five hundred dollars through Player Studio. Not too shabby. I wish I had five hundred bucks. Somebody just say, "Hey, make this thing. I'll get you five hundred bucks." Bam. Must be nice. Must be nice. All right, so we're on the forums. And who is this? Let's see who did this one. 2D guy. So 2D guy starts off doing some harasser stuff. And I believe 2D guy is a new member. Hopefully he's in the in the, the t Twitch stream so I can talk to him directly. Um, T-Ray. NC need a new hood helmet. Really? You trying to tell me you guys don't have enough hood helmets? I think we've got more than enough hood helmets to go around, sir. Trust me, I know this. I've seen them. Um, so 2D guy did a pretty good job with this. I think this is pretty nice. Let me go ahead and check the 3D file real quick. Hopefully we got some textures in there. Textures? No, no textures. Oh no. Just the mesh. Saddens me. All right, hold up. Maybe he's got one later further down here. Did he make any revisions? Yeah, looks like he's cleaning up the edges a little bit. 2D guy. Oh, he did some inner stuff in there. It's pretty cool. like that. And let's see. He's getting in there, getting some business going. And that's it. Yeah, man, I was hoping I saw a 3D version of that. But, yeah, it looks like he's got a good start. What do you guys think? Pretty cool stuff? Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, I like that. Nicely done, 2D guy. Keep pumping them out. All right, let's find somebody else. Oh, I think somebody wanted me to look at, uh, let's see, Rampage. Crossfire at the bottom of page one. Let's see. Okay, Rampage. Let's see if we can find this. I'm not going to spend too much time looking for this. better be where it needs to be. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, there it is right there. I almost... He almost gave up on you there, Crossfire X1. All right, yeah. Um, no. Mm, no. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. It would be nice if this we could animate these things. It would be really cool if we could animate that. But um, yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it's complex enough. It's is kind of rudimentary in its uh shape language. Very rudimentary, just spikes in a bar and this thing. So you wanna add some more detail, I would say go ahead and take this off. Take it off. Take it off. Um, yeah, and then you know, adding some new lights and stuff, that's really cool. But yeah, just give it some more flair, you know, something a little bit of something make it pop. It's really plain right now. So I would say add some more details. 
uh, and use some variations of the texture not too many broad swatches of gray kind of makes it a little bland uh, same thing goes for the hubcaps they look really really dull so spruce them up a little bit crossfire X it's a good start though definitely a good start nothing wrong with that nobody hits them out of the park first time around not even Arctorn so take that Arky all right uh, let's go down anybody else want me to look at their stuff while I'm browsing the forums uh, let's see get a cut page to critique on I don't even know how you say that Kalanetis bottom of page two okay let's try this bottom of page two I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom oh dude it was at the very bottom a seven robo bot okay yeah I've seen this one Okay, so out of this one, Robot, Robobot A7, I think this one is your winner. And then I'm not too sure about these things. The little fans and stuff. I don't know. I don't really know. I think what you could do is, you know, you could you know, bring this up to a like, little small point like the Vanu do. And the receding hairline just kind of, you know, cause it takes me aback a little bit. I don't want that. You want this to kind of follow this 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 shape here. You got this shape going down there. You want that to follow. Bam, bam, and then you throw like a little crown on there that kind of like peaks up, and then a little shell game on the back, a little shell all the way through, kind of overlapping shapes. So like that, bam, shrimp. But yeah, I think this one's too familiar to you know obviously the one that was created, right? I think that one is the way to go. This is where you need to go, A7 Robobot. Yep. I think that's where you need to go with that one. But yeah, it's definitely different. That's what we're looking for, different and unique. All right, seven minutes. Seven minutes left. Who's got something? Receding hairline. Yes, indeed. Um, Let's see. The fins being perpendicular kills the flow. Yeah, I think... I think it does kind of kill the flow. But I'm willing to give it a shot. I'm willing to let them uh, give it a shot with those changes. See what it looks like. See, like you had the, the like the overlapping stuff here, but it's supposed to overlap going back, not forward. ETA on new body armor for heavy. Um, probably later in the year. Later in the year. If we can get this this tool up and running and get it into your hands, it might be earlier. Who knows? Might be it'll unleash the hounds. Then, then you guys can do everything. I'll just, I'll just sit back and, or just quit. How about that? I'll just leave. Get the tool. You get to you get all the instructions. Do all the stuff yourself. Bam, game's yours. I'll just, I'll just go on vacation, permanently. So, who knows? Many things could open up once that tool's in your hands. Lots of things could open up. So we'll see about that. Hopefully, Mr. Chris Lang will have something for us really, really soon so that I can help him demonstrate that to all you fine folks out there. All right. We've got five more minutes. Question. Uh, is there a place not in game to see player studio items that are in the game? I guess your best way to do that would be go to Vanu Labs and most likely probably the person who asked that was probably Vanu Labs. <laughs> Go to Vanu Labs on YouTube. He's always got the latest uh, stuff that we put in the game. Usually makes videos of all the things that, that are new. So that's probably the best way to do that until you get that power in your own hands, which will be very, very soon. I'm be happy about that. Okay, so uh, speaking of vacations, how's your PS2 car? Oh, that is no vacation at all, sir. That car is killing me. I had to go see the doctor for it. I was like, man, am I dying, doc? He's like, no, nah, you good. Killing me. A lot of work, man. A lot of work. I'll never do that again. Pick to win the NBA championships. Not for this stream, but heat. 
all the way. Uh, let's see. Let's go see what Arctor is doing. You want to see what Arctor is doing? I don't know. These dudes getting a little bit too much pub. F him. We're not showing him no more. Let's go to our good friend Fuzz and see what Fuzz is up to. All right, so somebody asked for more more hoods. There you go. Fuzz has taken upon himself to start making more hoods, even though I will not take more hoods. So Fuzz, uh, first and foremost, uh, I think you got a, a unique design, but I don't think it's gonna gonna work for me. I think you might want to start from from zero go back to formula go back to formula like the green green lantern green uh green goblin said spider-man back to formula sir um yeah it start it usually starts with a good concept so if you start with a you know a concept that's not quite flushed out and you're kind of like doing it in 3d it's gonna it's not normally gonna metamorphosize into something that's super super duper awesome so i'd say start simple and work your way up from that and get some feedback from the people and you guys out there i see that not a lot of people have commented on his work so please do help fuzz out he's a new member he's uh he's trying to do this thing so please help him out give him some feedback that's what we do community's always got your back so trust me in this two minutes folks two minutes all right, well, I got you guys captive. I'm going to tell you about all the cool streams that we have. Okay, so we've got Command Center every second Thursday of the month. We just did one. That was awesome. You missed it. Go check it out on YouTube. Uh, Friday Night Ops every Friday night at 5.30, I mean 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock PST. Oh, PTS or whatever. I don't know, Pacific Standard Time, whatever that is. And then, of course, Work in Progress every Tuesday at 3 to 5 where you get to find out what the latest updates are on our maps that we're building here. And, of course, Inside the Player Studio every Monday, 5 to 6. And if you have not been living and you have not been paying attention to me forever, Please, please, please sign up for SOE Live August 14th through the 17th. Planet Hollywood, Las Vegas is going down. Uh, register now. It's 149 bucks. Went up. If you snooze, you lose. It went up slightly, just slightly. Not a big deal. Sign up now and get your new Jinx t-shirt. Look at that. Free Jinx t-shirt. In the mail. You get it in the mail. You don't have to wait in line. We've gotten rid of a whole waiting in line thing. So if you register now, you'll get your badge in the mail. And then you just come in, party's on, party's on. So Planet Hollywood, go ahead and sign up today, please. It's going to be good times. I'll be there. Higby will be there. Andre will be there messing things up, most likely. You know, taking pictures all sideways and stuff. You know how he is. Can't contain Andre these days. But, so... Go ahead and sign up for SOE Live. We'll see you there. And back to it. Um, so that's it for the stream, folks. It's 6 o'clock. Appreciate you letting me into your living rooms and laps or whatever you're watching this thing on at work uh, every week. It's been lovely. Episode 6. Down the tubes, folks. Tune in next week. When I'll have, hopefully, I'm going to have Chris Lang on here. He's going to explain this new thing and when and how and what. So, until then, thank you for joining me inside the Player Studios.